to hear it. Good morning to you. Then on a conference call, I'm sorry you had to hear all that. <laughs> but I guess it was necessary. I pray that all is well with everybody today. And I pray that uh, that we're trusting and believing God like we should be. Uh, sometimes life can be so challenging, and I know that. And, and we can forget uh, as far as what it's all about, uh, especially with these events that have gone on over these last couple of days. It's been very, very challenging with the, with the man, you know, with them. With the officer doing what they did with to this to this to this man, it was it was an, it was humiliating and embarrassing, and it should have been to all people uh, to for people to have authority and to and to and to and to do that is not a good thing. It's not of God, and it is just sad. And then now we've got our youth, and it's just not our youth though. It's because everybody is tired of the injustices. And so it's not just our youth, it's, it's youth from all parts of this nation uh, that are protesting and, and it's necessary to protest. But I think, I think it should go farther than that. I think we should change, we should have what's called police reform. And I think it should be at every level of uh, policing. And I think that, you know, when we get district attorneys who don't want to do the necessary things for whatever reason, I think we should try our best to get them out of office with all of our power. I think that's when we'll see a difference. Those are my opinions and those are my thoughts. I am for those that are protesting. I thank God for them. I think that we should be doing more, changing legislation and, 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 and putting, empowering ourselves to, to um, really go after those who file lawsuits against when they're discriminating and they've got authority there are a lot of things that we can do and we need to do, but we must come together. And it's not just a black thing. It is a United States of America thing. Um, and, and, and we, because we need everybody that we can get in order to get these changes done. Uh, so there is, there is discrimination. There is, um, um, racism, uh, but we can, we can make a change, but we must be willing to make the changes. And I pray this too. I pray that men, black men in particular, are not afraid. We, we rebuke that spirit of fear because when a man becomes afraid, he becomes very dangerous. And, uh, and I pray that I rebuke a spirit of fear. Uh, I heard somebody say that when they, when they, when they go out and their children go out there, they're, they're afraid. No, no, no. We don't need to be afraid. We need to make changes, you know, and, and then we need to, we need to really be able to, you know, stand up, you know, to, Find a way, we, we immediate way to maybe call when when you get the police called on you, you call the police on them. I mean, we there are things we can do if we we would just do it, but there is no need because 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 fear is preyed upon when 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 there's a sign of fear is preyed upon, and so we rebuke that spirit of fear. Not, and it's not just I saw a young Spanish man being mistreated the other day. So it's not just Black America. It's that we've got police that are that are that need help some of them and some of them are hurting and going through and they should not be out there under that kind of pressure. So we need what's called police reform. So that's what I need to say about that because I'm concerned about it. I know that you're concerned about it, but we can make a difference, but we have to be willing to do that. And we have to trust God. Prayer is critical, but we must pray and do. You know, when we pray and we have faith in God, then faith without works is dead. So we must pray and do. When you, when you look at the changes that's been made throughout the United States of America, you'll find out that they prayed. I mean, they prayed, they prayed, but they also protested. They also strategized. They also put together programs and they worked together and they made a difference. And that's what will happen if we would do the same thing. But we must have police reform and we must do it at every level. You know, and when we have these, I'll say this again, we have these prosecutors that are, that are racist and prejudiced and don't want to do the right thing, then we need to immediately begin to, to go after them with lawsuits and and, uh, and began to try and get them out of office as quickly, petition to get them out of office as quickly as possible. Uh, so those, those are the things that I've got on my mind, and I'm sure that, that they're on your mind as well. But I've got to get to the Word because God told me to preach the Word. <laughs> Amen. So that's what I'm going to do. I love you. I thank God for you. I pray that hearts are encouraged. 
Uh, pray for those that are out there on that front line. Support them. Help them to, 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 to press their way through. Don't be so angry with them. I know that it seems like what they're doing is horrible, but it's not as horrible as a man who's in authority taking the life of another man who's in handcuffs. So let's, let's, let's remember that it's about something, and it's, it's happened over and over and over again. And so at least they're doing something. So we need to support, but as well, we need to be able to come together, especially the clergy. We need to be able to come together and, 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 and make a difference. We've got the power, we've got the authority, but we must trust God to do it. Sometimes we get in our cell houses and our comfort zone, and we forget where we come from, but we need to answer this call. This is a call, and it's an emergency, and it must be answered now. Uh, but let me pray. Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ and we bless you, we glorify you, we worship you, we praise you, Father God. And we just lift up every, this United States of America to you. We ask for your mercy. We, we know there's evil, there's, there's unrighteousness, but Father God, we still need you to intervene and, and fix things and work them out and give us the wisdom and the strength and the energy and the courage, Father God, to make a difference. Yes, Father, even no matter how up, how up we, we are, no matter how much you've blessed us, let us remember, Father God, that we come from somewhere and, and that we are in this season, in this land for such a time as this. And let us not ignore the hour in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, I just bless you. I glorify you. And I, and I ask now that you will bless the people and encourage our hearts. I rebuke that spirit of fear. We should not fear people we pay, Father God, and that works for us. So, Father God, give us the wisdom to make a difference and do and make a change. In Jesus' name. Now, Father God, I decrease and pray that you might increase. I'm praying that your word will go forth now, God. And, and I know that this is the hour that you will be glorified. And I know that you've, you've prepared ears to hear your word. you prepare hearts to receive your word. And so it will go forth. Therefore, I must decrease, Father. I must submit myself and humble myself to you, Holy Spirit. And I ask that you'll teach this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, now. And, I, and I've got to get my mind out. I mean, that, that really made me sad. I mean, it was embarrassing. It was humiliating. Uh, and I just, I, I've got to get my mind back here now. I, I want to talk to you today. I've been talking to you about the delivering power of God during this, during this pandemic, during this shut-in, then during the shutdown. Uh, uh, th then I gave you experiencing God's delivering power for our inheritance. We, we want to experience, we need God's power, his delivering power. Based on what we studied and based on how we, looked, how we looked at Romans chapter 7, and then we looked at Galatians chapter 5, um, based on, and then we looked at 1 Corinthians. And so based on what we read and what we studied, we, we need, we, we're in a position or in conditions where we need God's delivering power. But as well, we need to, to, to have a, a purpose, uh, an agenda, and that agenda should be God promised us an inheritance. There's an inheritance, and the inheritance is the kingdom of God, the inheritance. So today, I'm going to continue in that same vein. I'm going to give you this, submitting to God's delivering power. Get this, submitting to God's delivering power, which is Christ Jesus manifested in us by the Holy Spirit. Submitting to God's delivering power ushers, ushers us into our inheritance. I do it, I do it again. Submitting to God's delivering power ushers us into our inheritance. Our inheritance is the kingdom of God, which is manifested in Christ Jesus. Is the kingdom of God manifested according to what we read? I'm going to read it again now, but let me do that again, and I want to go forward today. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at submitting to God's, God's delivering power ushers us into our inheritance. Our inheritance is the kingdom of God, which is manifested in Christ. Now, we left off over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. And it reads this way. Know ye not that the unrighteous, and when he talks about the unrighteous, he's talking about those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. He's not talking about all of us. See, our right is like a, as a filthy rag. We know that. So he's not talking about that. He's talking about when he talks about the unrighteous, he's talking about those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. And remember, in order to accept Jesus Christ, you have to be drawn by God to do that. And, and, and that is important to understand. But, but let me go forward because I want to teach this. So, so, so 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit. That's important. We, that's what it's all about. He saved us so we can inherit the kingdom of God. 
He said, be not deceived. And then he begins to say, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, he's, all of that's sexual immorality. And, and, and it's a compromise in our relationship with God. Of course, when he talks about, I said to you before, when he talks about adultery, uh, adulterers, he's not just talking about sexual immorality between a married person and somebody else. He's talking about uh, intimate uh, immorality between God's people and false gods as well. So it goes on. He says, he says this, and let me read that again. He said, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said it again. Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch what he says here in verse Verse 11, this is important, this is critical. And such were you, such were you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. The word sanctified means washed is, is to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and the baptism, when you get when you get in that water, he said you got to be born again by the water and by the spirit. And so to be washed is, the, is that baptism, but it's also the blood of Jesus in the presence of God. And so he said, but you are sanctified. The word sanctified means that because you've accepted Jesus Christ, now God has put us in a unique place where, where we can begin to experience the, the, the power of God. It's, it, the, the word sanctification means to be set apart for sacred use in the name of Jesus. So thank you, God, for setting us apart. He said you are justified. Justified, he's still dealing with. That's a legal term that he's dealing with. He's saying because, you know, we broke a lot of laws and we continue to do so, but because Jesus got it right, he lived right, he lived holy, he did what was necessary, he did what he was called to do, then he justified us. So God looks at Jesus and he stands in our place and we receive the justification of Jesus Christ. Even though we still do stuff, we have to confess it. We have to, when, we, when, we're, when we're in Christ, we're convicted to say, you know, to know first of all what we've done is wrong and then to go to God and say, God, you know, I know what I've done is wrong. Now I need you to purify me. So we're justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of God. So, so remember, I said, I said this to you that 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 uh, we we seek the delivering power of God for our uh, to experience our inheritance, which is the kingdom of God. Mark Mark chapter one verse fifteen, uh, and saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Repentance is a unique word, and I'm not going to go into it today, but. Repentance means to turn completely away from the nature of sin. The believer should confess their sins. You've already repented, but I don't want to get into it because it's a very in-depth teaching, and I believe that over the next couple of weeks I'll be able to get into it. But right now, what he's talking about is that when you get, when you accept Jesus Christ, before there's a conviction of our sins, we become very sorrowful, and so we repent. We, we really want to turn away from that way, and the help of that is the drawing of God. The Bible says that Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. So the, so the, so the help to turn away from sin. That's why sometimes we look at people. The help to turn away from sin is the power of God. So we look at people and we're like, oh man, why did they? But sometimes people can confess with their mouth, but they have never turned away from sin. So you, you don't see the salvation of God manifested in them. Uh, so now, so it goes on and says, and repent and believe the gospel. Luke chapter 13, verse 18. Luke chapter 13, verse 18. I want to give you this. Jesus is saying this is what, as, we, as we're inheriting the kingdom of God, we need to know what the kingdom of God is. We need to understand how it works and how it functions. He says this. Then said he unto, what is the kingdom of God like? Or whereunto shall I resemble it? What does it resemble? Verse 19 gives us a great example. He said, it is like a grain of mustard seed. That's what the word, the word he's saying is small. But it, and he, so, so it begins with a word. The word is from God and he draws you to Christ. The first thing Christ said, repent. Repent means that the God, now I hear you, I'm turned away from my sin. So it starts with the word. He said, the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took. And he cast into his garden. Your garden is your heart. And it grew and it waxed. So, so when we, as we accept Jesus, we begin to grow and we begin to get stronger. And our spirit man begins to get bigger and bigger where it can dominate our natural man. That's where the habits and the situations and circumstances that we know are hurting us begin to cease. It's when our spirit man 
gets bigger and bigger and bigger by hearing and hearing and hearing and yielding and yielding and submitting to the word of God. So he says, he says, um, and the fowls of the air are lodged in the branches of it. In verse 20 it says, and again he said, whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? He said, it is like leaving. We know what leaven does. It gets in the, it gets in the bread. It causes the bread. So it gets, when, the, when we get it, we get saved. Then, the, then what we do is the, the kingdom of God causes us to expand. It causes us to grow. It causes us to develop. It causes us to see life from a different perspective. And so he says, it, which, which a woman took and hid in, tr- in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Or leaving leaven. So the kingdom of God, here, here, here's, here's, here's a thought that God's given. The, the kingdom of God is manifested in us by Christ Jesus. When we receive the Holy Ghost, we have inherited the kingdom of God. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, we have accepted the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God dwells on the inside of us. It's, it's the, and, and I'm going to give it to you. The kingdom of God is the governing authority. It, it, it begins to govern our lives different. It is. It begins to change the way we think. It begins to give us a heavenly mindset, a heavenly conscious, uh, heavenly activities. It, uh, it gives us wisdom where we begin to see life from a perspective that is greater than what we've been living. And it causes us to change and make adjustments. And, and it, well, it makes the adjustments and changes in us as we yield to it. Now, let me give it all to you. It says the kingdom. This is what God gave me. The kingdom of God is the governing authority. The wisdom, knowledge, and power of God dwelling on the inside of us consistently, consistently, consistently. It doesn't stop until we stop paying attention. Let me give you some more. Although the kingdom of God is in us, when we accept Jesus Christ by faith or in faith, we have a choice to live by the manifested power of the kingdom of God. We have, we have to diligently seek. According to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek you what? First. Seek you first. This is consistent. Listen, brothers and sisters. Now, now a lot of times what he's saying is he's, he's pulling us out of the world. And so we, 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 we come into Christ, we still have a lot of issues. And if we don't understand, then we take our issues across the board. We try to, but they really can't go. So we're stuck. Like Paul was talking about over in Romans chapter 7, we're stuck in this flesh. We're stuck in this dysfunction. We're stuck in lack. Because, because we can't, when you, when you are born again, the key, what he said in the, in the scriptures over in Matthew chapter 6, he said this. He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry. And then he gave the examples of how God took care of, you know, Solomon and took care of um, the, the, the birds in the air. And, and so he can take care of us. But, 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 but you don't just stop worrying. There, there is a, a working of the Holy Spirit, an interaction there. There's, there's something that he does in the midst of crisis in your mind that shifts you over. Let's say, for instance, if, 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 if you're thinking about, well, I gotta, I gotta feed my family. I gotta, I need more income. I need. Well, he, what he, what he does. If you, if you, if he can pull your attention and you can get your focus on God, then what he, what he does is he's counseling out this oration and ushering you into the provisions of God, the blessings of God. That's what it means to seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then these things shall be added to you. And I, and I, and I use the pandemic, I use this time in my topic because I've noticed that I've had a lot of time to seek God more, get rid of distractions, and find that God is able to provide in a greater way than I can ask or think as long as I realize that I've come to an end to myself consistently. Like, there are certain things I just cannot do, do anything about. There are things I can do something about. But there are certain things you cannot do things do anything about. Well, it worries you. It can tear you down. Worration can tear you down. It can cause you to age fast. It can cause you to go through unnecessary changes. And, and, some, and the mind never stops thinking. See, the mind was created to think. It never stops thinking. So you have to put in your mind what it needs to think. You have to put the word. The Bible said, think on these things, whatsoever is good. So you have to take the word of God and you have to put it. So when you accept this, when you accept what, what he said is seeking the, the kingdom of God. God, what will you do right now? God, what, 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 what should my mind be on? God, I love you. I bless you. One thing I've learned is, is this. In Jesus' name, there's authority. And I speak to myself and I'll say, you know, in the name of Jesus, this is the kingdom of God. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't have time to worry. I am not going to be concerned about that. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me. I, I can't do nothing about that right now. Holy Spirit, bring it back to my remembrance when I need to bring it back to my remembrance. That's seeking the kingdom of God. I, I begin to concentrate on, uh, this is what the Holy Spirit does in return. It begins to convict me of, 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 of things that, that are important. You know, how I should act. It begins to deal with my hurt, my pain, my disappointment, my frustrations. And it causes me to, to look at it and, and, and how I should react to it. And, and so he takes me from worrying to a place of confession to a place of victory. So that's what it means to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, now uh, we have to gain the knowledge and understanding of how to function. Once we are in the kingdom, once we've inherited, we need to learn what it's all about, how to function in it. Let me show you something we need to learn. Let me show you this over in Hosea, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed or perish. I like the word perish, but in the King James Version, it says destroyed. Uh, but the, for a lack of knowledge. So, so you can be in Christ and still not understand what it's all about. And then, then it seems like life is not working. It seems like there's no power in it. It seems like God don't care. But it's, that's not true. You have to seek with a learning disposition, with, a, with an intent to hear, with an intent to understand. So he says, my people, he's talking about those who believe in him, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. See, sometimes because of what we know, we won't let what God know in. We have to let what God knows in and void out what we know because what we know have limitations. A lot of times it's, it's, it's not easy. You can be praying to God and say, God, I really want you to bless me. I want to come out of poverty. I want to, I really want to, you know, serve you. I want to be effective in your kingdom. I want, you know, I want a good life. I want to be blessed. But what you know, you have to realize this immediately. What I know cannot attribute it to where I want to go. And so, I, so I have to get new knowledge. When you're born again, you have, you're like a baby and you have to grow spiritually. Let me, let me, let me finish Jose 4, 6. He says this, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou has not rejected, thou has rejected knowledge. I also reject you that thou should not be preached to me, seeing that thou has for, forgotten the law. Now, let me, let me get into that just a little bit. Um, when we reject the knowledge of God, then we re we're rejecting the instructions and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, he's still there. I mean, God promised never to leave us never, never, and never to forsake us. He's still there. Hear that by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit is still. So when we reject the knowledge of God, we, and, and, and with what Christ has done, Jesus understands that it's not intentional. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit to teach us. But this is the thing you have to be careful about. You have to be willing to learn. Uh, we have to learn what our new life is when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Look over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creature. So every day his mercies are brand new. What I mean by mercies is God do stuff for us that we, we don't that we don't deserve. Uh, he, he forgive us for our errors is what it actually means. He's forgive. His mercy is that we don't get what we do deserve. And, uh, and so, so our thinking sometimes should cause certain things to happen in our lives, our fear and our insecurities. But when we go to God, then we, then we, then we, then he helps us. So, so this is the thought. If, if I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. I'm, my life is starting over and every day I need to be reminded of that. All things, all patterns of thinking can be destroyed only with new patterns of thinking. New patterns of thinking can only come in with a new life of surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now get this. If we do not learn who we are in Christ, we do not have access to our new life. There's a lot of people, they walk around, they say they're saved, but they never experience the kingdom of God manifesting in and through their lives. The power, the authority, the wisdom. But you can. You can. We all can. But we must want to. So we learn by hearing and studying the word of God. How do I do it? You ha I have to be willing to hear. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. Hearing means I'm, I must pay attention. I must be attentive. I must be willing to learn. Sometimes, you know, our hurt, our pain, our disappointments, our frustrations in life. You know, a lot of things happen that were just unjust, not right. People, people, different things happen. But the Holy Spirit can get, help you to get past that. 
It's not God stopping you. It's that you got to go for it. We have to go for it. We have to go for it. We have to go. We have to go for it. We have to learn. We have to learn. We have to learn. Even as I'm talking about about this, this with this, with these, with this, with all these police officers and all these things, there's injustice in the whole judicial system. We must learn. We must keep our focus and learn how to defeat this thing. We can. All things are possible through God. So we, 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 we if we, if we do not learn, because we you know this has been going on for a long time. I mean, if we do not learn, so you, you can, you can understand. That if I don't learn what Christ is saying, I'm going to stay the same or I'm going to get worse. Amen. We have to learn because we're in a new life. We have to learn how to work it, how it works, how to yield to it, how to submit to it. We learn by hearing and studying the word of God. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1 says this. My son. I'm going to go all the way down to verse 5. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandments within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, get this. If you cry out for discernment, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I want you to go there. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. We have, to, we have to listen. We have to listen. Revelation knowledge only comes from intimacy with God. Anybody can read the Bible, but the Bible is a mystery. And the Holy Spirit is the authorized agent to teach us and give us understanding. One person can get a revelation, and another person can get another another revelation, and it's still God. It's still God for that moment, for that time. And God gives us the milk that we can drink. Then He gives us uh, strong meat as we get able to. So revelation is either milk, the revelation that is revealed, not the reveal, not what's behind it. God can give us strong. He can give us. He can give us milk. I can give us strong meat. Everybody can be sitting up under the same word and get a different revelation based on how mature they are or how mature or how much they've got to grow. So that's critical. That's imperative. You cannot get you cannot live off somebody else's revelation. You have to know God for yourself and study the word for yourself and learn for yourself. Be not be not. This is Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Be not conformed to the word, but be you transformed by the renewing of your minds. Transformation. Be changed. Transform. That God set the tone transformation, let, let, let the Holy Spirit change, that you may prove, get this part, that you may prove, the word prove means to live out, to experience what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When we accept, this is not, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives, we must, we must, we must take the time to study. We must take the time to study. When, 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 we, when we know we can Fully submit. When, that's the only way we can know we can fully submit. We, if we don't, if we don't study, we can't submit. If we don't study, we can't see. See, it's different. It's far and God's God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we have to submit to it. We have to like when it comes through. We have to. And, and the only thing that cause you to submit is your love for God. As we learn by hearing God's word, we can cooperate with the Holy Spirit who indwells us. As we learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, we can live by the power of the Spirit. To live by the power of the Holy Spirit is the experience of life in and through us against all opposition. Which can which can which can not, which which cannot come any other way. Get this again. To live by the power of the Holy Spirit is the experience of life in and through us against all opposition. And this opposition cannot be handled any other way. Remember this, we do not own or manage the kingdom of God. This is a thought. This is important. We do not own or manage the kingdom of God. It owns and manages us when we yield to it. We must submit to the kingdom of God to make our lives better and worth living. Jesus' disciples at one point when, when Jesus was getting ready to go, they were, they were asking him questions. He said, when are you going to restore the 
Of course, they were still stuck in the world. They had not, they didn't understand what he was saying when he said that um, he's going to establish the kingdom of God. Verse, verse, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Go there with me. He says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now watch, this is our purpose. This is the main purpose for our salvation, and it's a lifestyle. You shall be witnesses unto me both, and he's talking about throughout the world. He's talking about throughout the world. Let me give you something. Let me give you a note. John Calvin said this. He said, it is the task of the church, John Calvin, to make the invisible kingdom, which is inside of us, visible. It's the task. We are the church. It's our responsibility to make the invisible kingdom of God indwelling us visible to the world. We do that by living in such a way that we bear witness to the reality of the kingship of Jesus Christ living on the inside of us. We, we, we do it in our workplaces. We do it in our homes. We do it in our school environments. We do it in our churches. We do it wherever we, 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 do it wherever we are, but it must be a lifestyle. The only way the kingdom of God is going to, is going to manifest in this world is that we have to live it out. We have to, we have to live it out. We, but we cannot live it out without the power of God. We cannot live it out without the power of God. So, brothers and sisters, we, we, can, we can experience the manifested kingdom of God as we're delivered consistently from the different vices and the challenges of life. But got to remember this. It's a choice. It's a choice. But we've been called. God didn't just save us for us to be poverty stricken and afraid, and downtrodden. I mean, when you're a Christian, and then I want to convict, I want all men and women to be Christians who are Christians. Even those that are that are in authority, and I'm, I'm still concerned about this with Reformation on this police force. I want you to be Christians and remember that you're Christians. I want you to stop being mean and evil with the authority that you've given. I want you to stop taking out your frustrations and your anger if you're a believer in Christ on the people of God. Not only them, but even those of us in our household during this time and this challenging time, no violence should be there. We should be Christians. No evil talking, no negative acting toward one another. We are Christians. We should exemplify that, and we can never exemplify that if we don't yield to the Holy Spirit. Yielding to the Holy Spirit don't start in the moment of a crisis. Yielding to the Holy Spirit starts when you're laying on your pillow in your bed and you're having a conversation with God. It goes throughout the day so that he can grab control when you feel like you're losing control. So it, what we've inherited, we've inherited wisdom. We've inherited the power of God, the wisdom of God, the, the understanding. We've got the favor of God. But we have to walk in it. We have to live it out. And that's when you'll see all these things added to you. God have a lot. Trust me, during this time, I've seen some amazing things. We've been praying and asking things, God, for, for various. And my, 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 I've seen amazing. I promise you I have. I've seen tremendous. I've seen unprecedented miracles, supernatural blessings manifest. But most of all, I've seen peace in the midst of storms. I've seen joy in the midst of sadness. That's why it's worth having, brothers and sisters. I love you. I thank God for you. But one thing is critical, and that's important. As we go forward and as you hear these messages, they don't mean a thing to you if you don't have Jesus Christ as Lord. That's what it's all about. Everything that I do, everything that, that, that ministers should do, preachers, it should be about this one thing, you accepting Jesus Christ, because that's your answer. That's your power. That's your life changer. How do you do that? You just ask God to forgive you for your sins. You know, the whole nature, we all, we're all born in a nature of sin. You're asking God just to forgive you, and then, you, and then, you're, then you're, you're, you're trusting God to help you, to give you wisdom to turn around. Then you say, Jesus, please come to my life. Come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my soul. Come and dwell me and be my Lord and be my Savior. When you do that, then you say, you know what? I do that by faith, and I've already asked you to come in. I believe you have. Therefore, Jesus... Out loud, I confess, you are the Lord of my life. I thank you for saving my life. I bless you. I glorify you. I worship you. I praise you. Brothers and sisters, let's pray. Let's keep, let's, let's keep on praying. And then whatever we can do to make a change, to make a difference, let's not let this lay down and die. And remember, I'm going back to this now. 
Remember, you can always use your phone. You call the police when the police are harassing you, when you're not comfortable. Tell them to get somebody out there. We've got to find some solutions to this, and we can. And there are simple solutions. And then we need to legislate. We need to get people in power. Go out and vote. I mean, get every, tell everybody they need to vote. Don't try to make them. Just ask them, say, please vote. And then learn who you're voting for. Don't just go vote. Look at who's on your side, who's going who's gonna to fight for you. Go out and vote. We've got something going on June the 9th. Get out there, man, and vote. Get, get it done. They make a difference. Find the people that you want in office. And if the folk ain't in office, let's legislate and let's, let's petition to get them out. Let's trust God to give us wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. It's going to take all of us to make a difference, but we can. And we don't need to live in fear. We cannot, men should not live in fear. No, no, we will not live in fear. No, we live by faith. And, and we've got power and we've got strength. Black males are strong. Boy, I love all males, but I'm black myself, so i got to talk to some black folks now. You're strong. God made you strong. And so, listen, you don't have to bow, but you have to be sharp as a serpent and humble as a dove. And so we need to come together, and we will come together in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you. I pray God's blessings upon you. Be at peace, and I'll be back Wednesday. We're going to talk some more in the name of Jesus. Be blessed.